What's up everybody, Corey Stockton, Joe Gilpin here with Flow Grappling. Today we're gonna to be breaking down some of the biggest, most latest news from ADCC. Uh, a couple weeks ago, ADCC announced finally that after more than a decade, uh, they will be unveiling a third ADCC division, changing up two more, of course, that's after more than 10 years where ADCC, ADCC has been operating under just two weight categories, minus 60 and over 60. Uh, that, leaves a lot of questions for us moving into the 2023-2024 ADCC season. The first of which being, of these competitors who competed in ADCC in the last season, where will they move in the next season? A lot of interesting choices to be made. Nobody can stay at the same weight class. Everybody is gonna have a decision to make. I wanna start with the plus 60 kilo champion, Amy Campo. She looked fantastic in 2022. She's coming back to 2024, definitely getting an invite. I'm feeling personally, Corey, like she's gonna split the difference, go middle for a 65 kilo berth. What do you think? It makes a lot of sense for Amy to go 65 kilo. In the IBJJF, she typically competes around medium heavy, which is about 147. So the extra three, four pounds, definitely worth it for a bit of an easier shot at an ADCC title. That cut is not exactly challenging for her. We've seen her make around that weight category before. By the way, 65 kilos, about 143, 144 pounds. Probably worthwhile for her. So one champ here at most likely under 65. I wanna talk about the other reigning ADCC champion, Fionn Davis. This change brings a lot of questions for Fionn. Fionn, of course, the minus 60 kilogram champion, that's about 135 pounds. So now she has to decide. Does she go down to minus 55, which is, what, about 121 pounds? Or minus 65, which is 145 or so pounds? Fionn definitely has a decision to make. She's somebody who's not really helped out at all by this decision to go to three weight classes and eliminate 60. She was really well suited for 60, I thought. Uh, I feel like if she were to go 65, by the way, I do think it would be the first time in an ADCC bracket where two female champions met up in the same bracket. That would be very interesting but I feel like she's gonna make that cut, be miserable for a little while, sorry about that Fionn, and go down to 55. What are you feeling? That is a sensible decision for her. I think we've seen her as low as 125 in the past. 121 is a big jump from 125, but maybe worthwhile for Fionn to uh, take the little hit in the weight and stay down at under 55. I wanna talk about Giovanna Jara. To me, she's one of the most exciting prospects in all of women's grappling. She had a great match with Kendall uh, last ADCC, didn't end up placing, but she's impressed a lot of people. Where do you see her going? I think Giovanna is probably one of the best suited athletes right now to go to the over 65 and do really well. We've seen her do well in the gi against Gabby Pisania. Of course, she looked great against Kendall Rusing. Giovanna Jara is one of the fastest rising stars in nogi competition, the, the recent black belt, but in her nogi career at, uh, at brown belt, she was winning super heavy, heavy, absolute, every single event she entered. I don't think she has a problem at 65, and I think if she enters that division, she'll be one of my favorites to win it. See, I wasn't so sure. I was kind of slotting her into a 65 kilo. I do think she can make that, but she is still young. She is still growing. She's a brand new black belt like you talked about. Just got promoted a few months ago, so I have no problem putting her in the 65 plus. Another big question here for me is Brianna St. Marie. Because she, she has maybe a lot of the same um, difficulties that somebody like Fionn would, they're, they're built very similarly. Brianna uh, has done very well at 125. I think 120 is just slightly more challenging for her. Me meanwhile, 145, that puts her up against, you know, the Amy Campos of the world, for example. So where do you Giovanna. see BSM going? It's funny, right? You see the people who did really well at 60 were having a lot of question about, are they going to be as well suited down? And it is a multiple day weigh in, right? It's not just you make it one time, you're gonna have to make that weight multiple times in order to achieve your dream. I think she goes down, I think she cuts the weight. What do you think? It, I, feel, I feel like wherever Fionn goes, it's likely that Brianna will go as well, or wherever, wherever Brianna goes, Fionn will go as well. I think they're very similarly suited, built very similarly, so minus 65 is also a viable option for them. Who do we have from the plus division? From the plus division, let's go plus, right? Let's go Gabby Garcia. I have a feeling that uh, one of the easier calls on the list, homegirl going plus, if she gets that invite back, which is probably expected, right? Gabby Garcia, one of the most dominant uh, ADCC athletes in history. Her size has worked for her in the past. I don't see her having a problem, obviously, going 
back to the well where she's been so successful in 2011, 2013, 2015, 2017, 2019. Of course, Gabby's gonna go in the plus 65. I wanna talk about the 2019 champion, Ooh. Bianca Basilio. I think for me this one is obvious, but curious to hear what you have to say, Joe. I agree. If she were to go up to 65 kilogram, I feel like Bianca would be really undersized. I feel like that would put her at a significant detriment. We're talking about somebody like Giovanna Jara uh, potentially making 65 kilo. If Bianca were to fight there against like an Amy Campo, it would be a marked size disadvantage, right? So to me, Bianca goes light. Is that what you're thinking? One of the easier calls on the list, Bianca Basilio, going to have a really good shot at yet another ADCC title if she enters into the minus 55 division. Let's talk Rafaela Guedes. She's been focusing on an MMA career. Uh, she has been able to make 145 in the past for different events. She hasn't really competed recently uh, because of that MMA focus, but where do you see the Otto star see, heading? I think that Rafaela can make minus 65, but I think it's smarter for her for the same reason it's smarter for Giovanna Jara to go to this plus 65. Rafael has already built well for 65 and I think she'll probably have a, an athletic advantage against everybody except for maybe Giovanna who's in the same boat. Let's, uh, let's take a break on this one, make an easy call. Maisa Bastos, um, she has to go minus 55. She's competed at lighter than that. She's done well at featherweight, but she is built as a light featherweight, even a rooster weight. Um, Quick thing to note about Maisa, Mo Jassim's already said that she's very likely to get an invitation and for good reason, right? She stamped her ticket to ADCC in uh, 2021 for ADCC 2022, winning the trials at, uh, at minus 60, which is 135 pounds. Maisa weighs like 120 pounds. So mm -hmm. no clearer picture than Maisa Bastos to have a great shot at minus 55 here and with the invitation pretty much guaranteed. Liz Clay, I think one of the more interesting decisions on this list is Liz Clay. I think she's somebody who has to be really happy that they have moved things around a little bit. Uh, where are you feeling for the American? Liz Clay got probably one of the best deals of anybody on this list uh, as far as the, the weight categories being reconfigured the way they are uh, because she has been kind of working her way down from consistently competing at medium heavyweight just a couple of years ago to consistently competing and thriving at middleweight uh, in the most recent months, the most recent years. Uh, of anybody, she is the most obvious choice to make minus 65, and I think she's a real metal threat at minus 65 this year. I agree. Amy Campo and Liz Clay is turning into a really interesting rivalry. Bia Mosquita, the 2017 world champion. I think of anybody from the minus 60 division, this is the easiest call, Bia Mosquita, up to minus 65. She cuts a lot of weight to make minus 60, so I think dropping down to minus 55, not very viable for her, but that creates a kind of cool uh, concoction here at the minus 65, right? She had that great match with Liz Clan, who's number one, really could have gone either way. I love the indication of an Amy Campo being a Mosquito matchup. I do want to bring up our pal Kendall Rusing. Uh, let's talk about Kendall hasn't competed since last ADCC. She had an unfortunate leg injury. A lot of people were penciling her as somebody who could have made the finals, potentially could have won the tournament. Uh, where are you feeling for Kendall? And I think she's in a much better shape if she does plus 65. I think minus 65 is just too much of a cut to run into your Bia Mosquitas, your Liz Clays, your Amy Campos. I think she's safe for up at plus 65 and another metal threat who stays around there. She has, she used to cut a lot of weight for wrestling when she was a very serious freestyle wrestler and she's talked about how uh, she doesn't look back on that very fondly, right? She, she uh, has no problem. Uh, being bigger, being stronger, being an athletic person. I think she is absolutely a threat to win 65 plus next time ADCC runs around. One more I wanna throw out there, uh, Elvira Karpinen. I have a feeling she's gonna go minus 65. She may have to do trials again after a fall to BSM in the minus, minus 60 division in the opening round uh, this time around. But with the additional division, if they're looking to kind of pull somebody out of the European area, I think 65 is the best call for her. I agree, I think up to 65 kilogram is probably gonna be her best bet. I think in the past, Elvira has struggled with some of the quicker opposition. And so I think going up to 65, being the quicker person, being very experienced here, she has a great chance to continue winning matches like she has in the past. Elvira is somebody who can really benefit from these three weight classes, not just from the weight, but from the idea there's gonna be more competitors, right? And you're gonna get more invites, you're gonna have them looking around for people who have ADCC experience. Elvira has as much as most people in this field. Let's talk about uh, 
Eleutheria Christodolu. Where are you feeling for Eleutheria? First instinct, minus 65. I believe she's made medium heavy in the past. That again is the 147 zone. So I could see her down to 143, 144 uh, with just a little bit of additional work. I think Eleutheria will win trials if she has to to make it back. Uh, she's just that good, especially coming out of the European area where there's uh, less competition. I think she is one of the best in Europe, and I think she makes minus 65 this time around yet again. Julia Maieli. I could see Julia going minus 55. Not sold on that. I have her pretty perfectly built for 60. Where do you see her going? She was well optimized for 60. She looked great at the European trials winning that last time. Uh, Falter when it came to Worlds, always tough. Uh, I think she's gonna have to do the trials again, and if I had to guess, I'm going 55 as well. Nikki Lloyd Griffith, another trials winner, another very tough, uh, experienced uh, grappler who, even if she doesn't go back to trials, still stands a chance of getting an invite just because she has ADCC experience, right? But I think probably going to the trials, uh, the Asia and Oceania trials, and uh, I would expect her to go up. 65 plus. Adele Fornarino, last on the list here. Uh, I think this one's pretty obvious. She's competed at light featherweight in the IBJJF. She is on the smaller side, so it was, uh, it's sung, sung her praises that she was able to do so well in the Asia Oceania trials uh, at minus 60. I think pretty shoe in here for minus 55, and I think she'll win trials again if she has to. Uh, Adele down to minus 55. Yeah. Guys, that's 16 world-class grapplers from the 2022 uh, ADCC World Championships. This is our best guess. What do you think, Corey? Do you think, uh, how, how close do you think we're going to end up being? So I think whether or not uh, some of these athletes go up or down, the, at the end of the day, we have pretty even divisions here, right? We have six or so at 55, five and five at under and over 65. So I think um, we have a pretty good idea of about what these divisions will look like. They are competitive divisions. I think a lot of these women will earn invites and that leaves just a couple of trial slots left. Of course, there are four trial slots in each, each division, so some of these women will move out or qualify back, but I think, yeah, I'm happy with how this looks. I agree. I also think it's worth pointing out that in 2022, we had a record number of trials winners come through to be champions and medalists at the World Championships. So if you think that just having a spot previous is going to guarantee future success, that's obviously not the case, right? But I think you look at these divisions, I don't know for sure who would win this, right? Giovanna Jara, Gabby Garcia, you know, we go through all these again, but uh, these would be stacked divisions just in their own right, absolutely. ADCC, 13 months away, can you believe it? Uh, T-Mobile Arena this time, can't wait. See so many of these athletes, so many more. The trials start in September, uh, kicking off in Warsaw, Poland. We will be with you all the way throughout the ADCC season. Stick around.